Are you trying to write a literature review or an introduction and you're not really sure exactly the differences between them? In this video, I want to talk about three common mistakes that are made when writing a literature review or an introduction, and they come from not being able to discern between a literature review or an introduction. If you're more interested on just the general differences between your lit review and introduction, check out the video above where I just go over the basic differences between those two. To get started, I want to cover three common mistakes that are made when writing either your introduction or your literature review. And the first common mistake that is made is having too much literature in your introduction or having too little literature in your lit review. Introductions are part of research papers, and so they're really only a small part of the total product. The introduction is meant to guide your reader into your research so that they know why it's important, they can understand the research being performed, and they have an idea of what you're going to cover in that research paper. Therefore, you don't want to include a large amount of literature in your introduction because it's going to detract the reader from really being able to understand what your research is and for even wanting to get through your introduction and into the research. So instead, you want a shorter amount of literature that you cover within your introduction, even even though you do want to cover some literature. And so what's a really good key in being able to determine how much literature to put into your introduction is to ask yourself what papers are directly related to me performing this research. And usually it's only about three to five papers that are relevant. What you want to do in your introduction is you only want to cover the parts of those paper that can really help your reader understand where this idea and the research that you're going to talk about came from. And so in a literature review, you're likely to go more into detail on each of your papers and talk about their methodology, all of the results that they got and how it contributed to the field. But in your introduction, you only want to pull out what is absolutely imperative that your reader understands before moving on to understanding your research. On the other hand, in your literature review, it's a little bit different because your literature review is the entire product. So you're going to cover a larger amount of, of literature in your literature review than you will your introduction. And so even in your literature review, you're going to have an introduction where you should really follow the same notes that I just talked about for your introductions to your research papers. You're going to cover a smaller amount of literature in your introduction, mainly giving background knowledge and a little bit of context for how your research started that you're going to talk about in your literature review. Then you're going to have a literature review story. And if you want to know more about finding your literature review and how to write it, check out this video above that I did all about writing your literature review. But in your literature story, you're going to cover, usually depending on what type of literature review you're doing, you're either going to cover a very large amount of literature or even a small amount of literature, usually around six to 12 papers if you're doing a little bit more of a mini review. But in your literature review, you want to go into each of those papers in really intense detail. And you want to talk about what kind of drove the paper, what the methodology was, the results that they got, and how that contributes to the field. And that creates a much larger literature review that you're going more in depth in than you should be going in in your introduction. And so that's one of the most common mistakes I see is a introduction that has way too much literature in it or a literature review that isn't going in depth enough and actually doesn't have enough literature in it. The second common mistake that is often made is having too long of an introduction. This kind of ties into your first mistake because if you have too much literature, you're going to have too long of an introduction. A lot of us want to make our introductions these massive works of art that includes all of this information in it. However, that's not really conducive to what an introduction is for, which is to help the reader understand the research that's going to be covered in the body of your paper. Therefore, you want your introduction to be about a page and a half to two pages double spaced. This is a really good range for including everything that you need to include within your research paper introduction, but not including too much information that it actually detracts the reader 
from the research story being told. If you find that you're going over about two pages double spaced, you may want to consider what you're actually including in your introduction. And to everything that you include in your introduction, you should ask whether that is directly helping the reader understand your research. If it's not, then you may want to cut it out and actually make it more concise and telling the reader exactly what they need to know. The third common mistake that is made both in a research introduction and in a literature review is sharing what you know. I think this is really common because as students, we're taught that to show that we know something, we have to include it in papers or things like that, or it's going to be assumed that we don't know it. And often when we write papers, it's the sole purpose of it is to show that we know things. However, when you're writing research papers, especially scientific papers that you're going to submit to journals, the reason why you're writing that paper has changed than writing a paper in school. And so the reason you're writing it is to communicate research and to tell a reader what they need to know and help them understand what you did. Therefore, you want to shift from focusing on sharing what you know to focusing on the reader and what they need to know. And when we make this focus, you're going to find that your introductions are probably going to become more concise and more powerful because they're directly engaging the reader and giving them exactly what they need to know in the background information and the importance of your field to understand the research that you're conducting and trying to share with them. And that's really the most important part is you're trying to communicate research. And so think about when you read introductions to research papers, what are you trying to get from that introduction? Generally, you're trying to figure out what they're doing in this study. You're trying to figure out what is the knowledge you need or what are the acronyms, what are the basic processes that you need to understand to understand their research. And then you're trying to figure out what they're trying to do in their research. If you understand all of these things, once you get into the methods and the results section, you can understand those results so much better. You don't really need them to tell you about things that are somewhat adjacent to what they're talking about, but aren't necessary for you to understand their research. You might even find yourself frustrated if their research introduction is just jumping around telling you all these random facts that aren't important to the research that is being studied because ultimately they're wasting your time. And so when you're writing your research introductions, you want to have that same mindset. You want to give them exactly what they need, but only what they need to understand your research. And that's actually going to make you write much better research papers and research introductions. If you want more on the entire process of writing a research paper, please check out my scientific research paper checklist. The link is below. It's a full checklist of my entire process to go from data to completely published research papers. And so go ahead and download that checklist. I think it'll really help you when you're trying to write these research papers. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.